I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, Velocities of Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Today we're going to review the debut album um, from a guy named Nick Zamudo. Um, the, the, his artist name is Zamudo, and the album title is Zamudo, self-titled. Nick Zamudo is one half of the um, kind of sad breakup of the books, which were, you know, kind of, uh, they're a band that we reviewed The Way Out, um, mm -hmm. their latest album, which came out in 2010. The band has since split up, and, and this is Nick Zamudo's first kind of wing spreading. Um, jumping into a, a derivation of what the book sound was, which was um, kind of, uh, it was an electronic based sound, very, very focused on samples and was very functional, kind of a, had a meditational vibe mm -hmm. to it, um, but still had some very um, upbeat and aggressive tracks to it. Um, one that we, it was an album that we really liked a lot. Um, I, I remember, and, and now coming off of that into this was kind of a different shift for that, us because we're listening to this in a whole new context, and kind of a different, some different ideas are present here. Um, mm -hmm. The samples are still here, but they're used less predominantly. Mm -hmm. The songwriting doesn't rely on the samples to, to, to for a structure to the song. Um, the other thing is that uh, Nick Zamudo actually uses his vocal parts. He loops them, or he may, um, you know, put some distortion or some crazy effects on them uh -huh. to make them more of an instrument than rather what vocals traditionally are on an album, and and that kind of makes it more of a instrumental listening experience with still being able to provide an occasional lyric here and there. So that's kind of um, a difference in sound. Tom, anything else you want to add to that to that change? No, it's a good description of the sound. I mean, I really like the way this is set up. Um, the way it's presented to you, the production is really cool. Yeah. Um, with the way it blends the the samples and the live performances and the uh, just raw you know instrumentation right. um, and loops, mm -hmm. it's it's a really cool mix of all that, and I like that it doesn't rely too much on one because it makes it a very dynamic listening experience. Yeah, I felt like there were some really 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 strong tracks on yeah. this album. Uh, tracks that honestly are going to be on my favorite tracks. Same in here. Twelve. Same here. Um, and you know tracks like Grown Man Don't Tr Don't Cry and Idiom When. Um, Grow Me and Don't Cry is this long six minute track that where we really get to see Nick Zamuda's songwriting ability come out. You know, mm -hmm. he's really changing and allowing this thing to grow and he maintains control of it the whole time. And I feel like it's a really fun listen and, and something that, you know, I, I think I'll keep coming back to mm -hmm. in the future. And and there's a number of tracks like that on this album where you where you really feel like Zamudo is is um you know, has a good control over it. Now, there's a couple there, though, that I didn't feel like he did that as much, and I felt like um, tracks six through eight kind of just, they would, uh, an idea was established, you get in this groove, and then the track just kind of fizzled out. Mm -hmm. um, minor complaint, but overall, um, it, that was kind of a, 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 a kind of a downfall to just that sag in the middle for mm -hmm. me. And see, that's the way I was about the end of the album. Right. And this one was really hard to pick a score for me because... Uh, I love the first half. There are a bunch of just really stellar tracks on there. And then starting around Zebra Butt or Weird Ceiling, um, the rest of the album, besides the ending track, I think the, the closing track was pretty good. I just didn't really care all that much. It kind of slumped at the end. Mm. Which, it, it's weird because it's a huge separation between how much I liked the first half and how much I, I was just underwhelmed by the last half. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's hard to find that balance, you know, in, in representing a score for an album that I, I feel so differently about different parts of. Mm -hmm. um, but really, you know, it kind of goes to show how we listen to music differently because Jake was mentioning before we turned the camera on that he started, um, you know, with a lower score and, and kind of ended up going higher, I was the exact opposite. I kind of started higher and then ended up going down past even, you know, maybe where you yeah, started. Yeah, we really did have polar opposite experiences uh -huh. because I actually, on top of what you just said, I actually started off liking the first half a lot and then not liking the second half as much, but mm -hmm. then over time finding a couple tracks like Full Fading and Harlequin that mm -hmm. I, I really thought were strong on the second half. I found aspects about it that I liked that kind of brought me back so that there was just a couple tracks in there, maybe some a little bit of weaker tracks. Uh -huh. And I think I think the reason is I think one thing that one way that we listen to music differently, you know, you gotta understand while we're sitting and talking and giving our opinions together, we listen to music really differently, Very differently. Um, when it comes down to it. You know, a lot of similarities, a lot of different things. Um, but me, like like my favorite tracks were the first two tracks. Right. I love them. They're gonna end up being some of my favorite of the year. And so when I start an album with something that strong, I just get so excited. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. And then so you know, when there are spots that don't impress me as much later on on. The that first listen, I kind of forgive them. Right. I kind of just look past them and think about the things that I do like. But then as I keep listening to it, I have to be realistic with myself and, and you know, 
put just as much weight on the spots that I was unimpressed right. as the spots where I was impressed. Right. I think an art I think every artist when they're making an album should just take a second before they release it and just really think about their track placement. Yeah. Take take 10 minutes and go through and go which are the clear are there clear best tracks here? Mm -hmm. Ask their friends, are there clear best tracks? Take those best tracks Put them at the end of your album. It doesn't have to be right at the end. But if you have 13 tracks on your album and, and there's like two or three really mm -hmm. good ones, make those tracks, you know, nine on. Don't make them right away and then have the rest of your album be just, you know, yeah. not not live up to the expectation set. Because the problem with that is you're not ever going to... Your, your, your listener is going to become disengaged because, or let down because, you know, the, their favorite tracks on the album are over two tracks in and then they have nothing else to look forward to. So it kind of ruins the album listen. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I, I don't know. It, it kind of depends on where you're coming from here because like I yeah. said I love the last track Full Fading um, I love that this whole album kind of plays out and you have all these different you know different ideas in, of, of, of electronic music and then you get to the last track was just a really straight just dark and moody uh, track to kind of close it out a very different track than the rest mm -hmm. of the album yeah. it showed a lot of I diversity like it, yeah. and emotional depth mm -hmm. um, overall I like this album I'm going 84 I'm going 79 okay so low 80s solid album definitely you guys should check this out let us know what you think. Um, we were a fan of the book, so we're definitely looking forward to uh, what Zamudo can do in the future. So let us know what you guys think at www.velocitiesinmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. Also, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. That's where we communicate with you, and you guys are what makes VIMTV what it is today. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Movie Music Critique Forward. I